The Wallabies scored an absolutely beauty of a try against South Africa in round three of a rugby championship. But let's look at the building blocks what allowed the Wallabies to score this brilliant try. So with a highly controversial yellow card to Faf de Klerk, the Springboks have opted to bring right winger Halan up into the scrum half position. Now that means there's space elsewhere, notably in the backfield. And Paisami, no frills at all. He puts boot to ball and goes absolutely long into that space where Halan may have been. And with the laws as they are, this is going to lead to a goal line dropout. Now, if you think of a context where the Wallabies started, this is a huge, huge territory game. So a long kick nowadays can be a shot to nothing to gain territory. And that's exactly what happens. Even with a 40 metre kick, the Aussies are still getting it in the South Africa half where they can set up. And this is where the first setup happens. Ball straight to Valentini, who's going to the middle of the field. A big, strong run. And he wants to set up an attacking platform in the middle because it's much harder to defend. So big, strong carry. There's a ruck. And now let's look a little bit of detail in the setup here. So this is quite clearly pre-planned and it's going to be a run around with number one James Slipper and number nine Nick White. But you've also got Jed Holloway on that hard line just to attract the South African defence. And with this setup, that's exactly what happens. You've got all eyes from the spring box on that ball on the play around. But what you also have is Lodicio at 10. He's hanging out the back. Now when we play through here, he's not going to be used. It's well read by South Africa. They kill that play. But let's just take a look at what happens from pretty much a similar setup as we play forward. But first of all, this starts with really strong defense from the Wallabies. It's all about line speed and putting pressure on that first attacker to really try and slow that play down. Really wise ruck decisions. Got numbers on their feet. You can see the gain line. They're getting over it and they're looking for those double tackles. Big dominant defense. And this is just making the spring box go backwards. Again, they're getting double tackles in. Uh, Marks offloads the ball. It gets a bit scrappy. Kalise tries to clean up. But you can still see they haven't really went anywhere. And his next play is just such a beautiful lead from Paisami, number 12. He just reads that the ball goes out the back to Pollard. Stops it dead. That allows to really cause havoc at the ruck. But what I love about this, he's back on his feet and he kicks the ball long on the turnover because he knows the spring box are out of position. Once again, it goes dead. But as we saw earlier, this leads to a dropout. And then here we go. Once again, this is a direct copy of what we just saw a few minutes earlier with Valentini receiving the ball and powering into the midfield. And once again, it's exactly the same setup. You've got Slipper as first receiver, Holloway on the outside, and White on the wraparound. And also, you've got Lolosio, who's staying on the inside. And once again, the South Africans are all concentrating on that ball. And if we just turn the camera around, you can see how the deceptions worked. All eyes have went onto James Slipper, onto the ball. Lolosio springs into action. He's through. And what I love about this is he also he has support. He's got options left and right, a little out the back, and there's an absolutely beautiful try. But I just love how they manipulated that. They worked the space. They used their options. And this was just really, really fun to watch.